good radio guy will go, who am I talking to? What's my demo? You know, that Mobile Beat Top 200 is a great thing to have. Yeah, right. The feel of the crowd, I may do a similar set with those that I'm comfortable with because I know they're winners. Hello again, and welcome to another week of Mobile Music Thursday. I'm particularly excited about uh, this week's guest. I got to know him about uh, a year ago. Very talented individual uh, from the Cincinnati area that has been entertaining in that area for years. In fact, he's uh, for about 32 years, he's been a uh, on-air radio personality in that area, but he's also had simultaneously with that his events company as well as his mobile DJ and music company, which has encompassed everything from uh, coordination to, of course, uh, the music and, and music design and, and creating experiences for people emceeing he's uh, done parties for the Cincinnati Bengals have been uh, his clients he's been all over that city of Cincinnati and with uh, 38 years in radio and 37 years of doing live events here's a guy that has amazing experience to draw from in entertaining crowds groups choosing the right music as well as all the decades of music he's just gone through by himself and look he still looks young it's JD <laughs> Hughes uh, from on the air entertainment and weddings by JD Hughes. JD, thanks for uh, showing up on Mobile Music Thursday this week. Great to be here, Jason. Thanks for asking me. Awesome. So, uh, so we're not going to go through every decade of music that I'm sure you've cataloged <laughs> in your in your uh, head as you've played each one of them as they've been hits as the hits have passed. But yeah. let's uh, let's begin by just kind of looking at a general like how you approach like when you're going to do a wedding and you're looking at the music that you're going to be playing for a given wedding and we can choose one for example if they vary really a lot for you. Um, what is what is your approach to uh, to your your playlist and how you're going to program the music for that night uh, for for a me, wedding yes. how we start uh i always start with a couple and i've got to differentiate f- for you yes um uh, when i when i'm doing an event for a corporate or a non-family event that's a little different i like to have a playlist from them okay. especially if it's going to be a corporate party or if it's going to be uh let's say um uh, because corporate parties are different in the Cincinnati area in the Midwest. Uh, there's not, my experience in the last few years, there's not a whole lot of dancing. People don't like to dance with their bosses around. Mm-hmm. But they like to have certain things that they can play that could be triggers for all we know. So I, I meet with them usually. But that's a little different. When I get to the family events, um, I spend probably uh, an hour, maybe two with the couple uh, getting their preferences, and then uh, finding out if they want me to, to do any requests. And that's that's going to be handled the night of. The but I said all that, so I have that ready to go. Okay. Uh, and, and I've dug my well deep enough, if you will, for, for an example, that I can pull into it at any time. And at least if they're not going to dance, because we'll talk about my philosophy a little bit about music but if they're not going to dance i can uh, play the things that my clients in particular a uh, couple or a family or a um company or a uh, a particular like i do a lot of stuff with amusement parks around the area mm-hmm. king's island is one of them sure or coney sure. island is another one a local amusement park here along uh, the ohio river that i can play what they are asking me for their clients needs okay. so there's a, there's a multitude. I want to see what the lay of the land uh, will be for the night. Who are my bosses? Mm-hmm. And then a good radio guy will go, who am I talking to? What's my demo? Sure. And uh, we try to give as close as I can to the percentage of, of how many of a certain age group is going to be there because they will react differently. Sure. So as an example, let's talk about like, uh, let's say your last wedding, uh, which hopefully is the the fresh, hasn't already melted into all the other events of, of your memories. Uh, but uh, your last wedding, what was the approach with that? Like uh, kind of what was the demo? How much mu- music did you, did you get from them up front? Like when you ask them for music, is this something that you want them to really give you the list and you organize it for the night? Or do you take a different approach in how you find out what appeals to them? It's funny, when I started doing mobile stuff, it was in the clubs in the 70s. And mm-hmm. I started at a small radio station in 1976 and just kept going uh, in the Cincinnati area. And we would go to different clubs in the Cincinnati area. And, of course, it was all vinyl then. Yes. 
Uh, and so you would set your playlists and go from there. But I've always been a uh, different. I'm not, I'm not, um, even in the clubs, I, I wouldn't be considered a classic mixer. Okay. And much more of a music professional. Uh, and I like to play off the crowd. So it's real jocks, real DJs. And I, uh, there's a couple of guys here in the Cincinnati area that I just love. Mm -hmm. uh, DJ Toad or DJ Mark McFadden, two guys in the Cincinnati area. If you get a chance to look them up on the web. Uh, excellent mixers. They, I, I am in awe. I love to watch them work. I yeah. go and just just watch them and they'll go, do you want to jump up here? And I'm like, I don't want to get near you. <laughs> uh, you know, and I'm like, oh, you're dude, I'm not worthy, that kind of stuff. But with my kind of style, I like to play off the crowd and I may take them in a, in a 160 degree uh, different road if the crowd, because I like to hear that first two or three seconds when you'll hear the crowd go, Oh, yes. And right. That, that recognition or excitement. About. Yeah. So uh, I like that moment. Now that's selfish, but it well, stays yeah. in, in, in their minds as well that, oh, this is, a, this is fun. Right. That's really what I try to get to get to the fun of it. I'm so give me an big. example once before we move along too, for, too further. So, uh, so uh, you differentiated between uh, like the mixers and then you called yourself more of a music professional. So, and, and, and does that mean that involves more like mic work and getting people excited by interacting on the microphone and then just kind of slam mixing from, from song to song or what is, what does that look like? Maybe can you give me a, an example? It can be, um, you still, there comes a time where you still have to, you have to mix a little bit, but at weddings in the Cincinnati and the Midwest, mm -hmm. we don't really beat mix. I mean, I know that I don't, and okay. I, and I, and most of the jocks that I talk to, the mobile guys, they don't, they haven't for years. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, you can, and there are guys that do it and are good at it. Uh, but the crowd doesn't appreciate it like they would in a club. Yeah, uh, it's just sort of something that they go, "Oh yeah, that was nice." Mm -hmm. So with me, depending on the crowd, um, because I, with my weddings, my weddings are much more family events. Uh huh. Sure. Uh, and what I mean by that is, the parties that I will do for the amusement parks or for some of the corporates or I do, um, we do, um, retro dances and have for the last 25 years at a, at one of the amusement parks here. And I will average between 800 and 1200 people. Wow. The demo for that will be between the ages of 45 and 55 or 60. Okay. Now, because of that, I, and, and we're getting younger, there are pockets where we'll have 35s and 45s because there's no place for them to go mm. for that 80s, uh, 60s, 70s, 80s. So sure. this has become popular. But when I do that, I don't, uh, when I do those kinds, I don't necessarily, for weddings, I don't like to make my playlist ahead of time so that I just play it. Okay. I do like to feel it. I got to get the feeling of the crowd. I've got to have it that night. It's very much an in the moment thing for you. It is. Uh, and I have other friends of mine who are very good that are there at their best because they pre thought it out. Mm -hmm. And, and generally speaking, what I find when I go to, you know, some of the other DJ conventions or I talk to other DJ friends of ours, they will have certain sets that are just their go-to sets. Sure. After 35 plus years of doing this, mm -hmm. I actually like to see if I do empty the floor and okay. can I get it back? Sure. It's a fun thing for me. Right. And I always tell the, the client ahead of time, especially at a wedding, uh, don't panic because it doesn't mean we're not a success if people aren't dancing. Mm -hmm. I know that sounds funny for my kinds of stuff. Mm -hmm. I do I do look out and, and gauge the crowd and say, are they, are they dancing at their table? Are they tapping their toe? Are sure. they singing along? Mm -hmm. Are they engaged? Exactly. And uh, they may be having more fun there than they would on the floor. And so, uh, but now <laughs> I give the caveat saying if they are not dancing or tapping their toes or singing along, right. uh, then come up to me immediately because we got to figure this out. Mm -hmm. We're going to move immediately. But now I really like to see 
uh, rather than have to depend on that go-to set. Um, inexperienced masters of ceremonies and music professionals and or DJs mm -hmm. tend to go to that same set. And if you see them at a wedding, uh, if you see them at more than one, uh, they have the tendency because that's their comfort zone. So are you referring to, uh, in trying to kind of get specific to understand what you're referring to, would you mean like uh, throwing out the Cupid shuffle? Because, you know, line, in the Midwest, line dances are like magnets, you know? It's like, yeah. oh, we'll do that. You know, we may yeah. not dance anything else all night, but we'll come out and do the Cupid shuffle or we'll do the electric the electric boogie and that, that sort of thing to get it going again. Is that what you're referring to? Or are you referring to, to something else in terms of those those go-to sets to just to, to get be, things reignited? Um, but what you want to watch out for, A, and B, you want to, you, you might want to have just, I always like to have one or two songs, you know, are up or gone. That's your go-to that you have to have, you know, you, you don't want to, you know, you don't want to be down too long with no dance floor, mm -hmm. but, uh, but it's different at a party at a party. Then I, I just keep the music going. And even at weddings by the, you know, there, there are. There are sections of, of a wedding reception in the Midwest that mm -hmm. there's not on the East Coast, and I, I, and I haven't done one in a long time down along uh, the West Coast or the west, uh, west side of the country. Sure. But in the Midwest, you, know, you generally can do the same reception, whether you're in Minneapolis uh, or in Cincinnati or uh, in, uh, let's say, Missouri or Southern Kentucky, although you're starting to get into some, of the, some more of the Southern. Sure. But, but generally speaking, the jocks will have an oldie set, a 70s set, a, an 80s set, mm -hmm. and then move into the new millennium. And they will almost, because if they've done it enough, they've got comfortable with it, and they know it works, they will play the same music in the same order. Yeah. And if you happen to see them at a wedding. Uh, now, for some clients, and I will say this at bridal shows, uh, we do. We tend to do a lot of bridal shows. I'm mm -hmm. one of the few guys that do them, that that like them. I don't really book out of them. I just like to harass the people there. <laughs> but it's fun for me because when I'm talking to them, I will say, if that's what you want, and you saw a particular job, mm -hmm. and you said that's what I want, then you're that. That's what you're going to get, and right. you'll be happy with that. Mm -hmm. With me, I try just for my own sake to try and not do that. I try to make it where I can figure out the feel of the crowd. I may do a similar set with those that I'm comfortable with because I know they're winners. You know, that Mobile Beat Top 200 is a great thing to have. Yeah, right? Yeah, but we just, just know I, I what's like popular. That. Yeah, well, and it does keep you in tune, keeps your thumb on the pulse. Yep. But if I can deviate, differentiate, maybe find something from somebody I always... I always try and coach my bridal, my wedding party. If Peter Mary heard me say bridal party, he'd shoot me. <laughs> uh, my wedding party. I try to coach my wedding party to say to me, you know these guys. If there's a trigger that you used to always do at the college or at the parties, if you used to always sing Sweet Caroline or if there's somebody that yes. used to always get up and do this unbelievable dance to uh, jump around, then – let me know mm -hmm. because we want to get them involved. Right. Suddenly it's not about me being the show. It's about the crowd being who they are, the show, part of the part of the night, making memories, and then me being a facilitator mm -hmm. of whatever wherever that takes me. The and facilitator I try to, of fun. Well, yeah, and I try to say to my clients, I don't do the same wedding reception every time. Mm-hmm. Parties may be different. They want that. They hire me for that. Sometimes they hire me just because I'm a professional radio announcer and speak uh, the way they want me to speak. Mm -hmm. Other mm -hmm. times they hire me because I'm an on-air personality and have pay I, I have equity in that career sure. and in this market. Right. I mean, it's like you, you're actually – one advantage you have as being a, a, a personality in that market for so long is that there's a lot of people, I'm sure, that feel like they already know you. Because they they've do. been listening to you, you know, you have they, you have that a rapport. Gives them liberties, right, right. Yeah. Um, now, so I want to ask you about. Funny. I want to ask you about something that you mentioned in okay. in when we exchanged uh, email messages about this. And you said, "I do 
intergenerational mixing. And I'm like, I love that intergenerational mixing. What to describe, tell me what that is. Describe what that is for you. Let's I'll, I'm going to answer it rather lengthy. Okay. This is, this is a little different. Uh, I'm one of a few, a handful of guys that are literally doing the 25th and 30th anniversaries of couples I did 25 years ago. Sure. Right. And the last 10 or 15, especially the last 10, uh, when we meet with our couples for the first time at the first meeting, everything that I do at my wedding reception meetings, and for, let's say, um, a couple I just did last week uh, at Great American Ballpark where the Reds play, uh, everything we do, we set it up so that we can repeat that or do or do gives us other options for their 25th mm -hmm. because you don't plan for the 25th in 25 years. You plan for it now leading up to that. And you hope that you have all this reservoir of memories and fun moments uh, and, and give them that so that when we get there to plan it, an example is um, I did a 25th anniversary about a year or so, two years ago. Mm hmm. And uh, one of the things we did, and I just happened to, and I didn't repeat it very often until the last 10 years, but one of the things, and I think they brought it up, was I did 25 years ago, we set the advice cards on all the tables okay. with the pens. And then they wrote it up and it was fun. Yeah. Well, when I got together a year or so ago in December with the couple to plan their 25th, mm -hmm. we got the names of all the people that were still around and we resent them out. So that at the 25th, I got up at the microphone and said, you know, 25 years ago, you said. Oh, nice. But now you say. What a treat. And, and it was a ball because there again, I don't know what they're going to say. Right. But, and it's regardless of the music at that point. Mm -hmm. See, the music should be something that is, <coughs> excuse me, is um, a topping on, on the Sunday. Okay. It, 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 it isn't in the kind of ways that I craft it, and I'll tell you why in just a second, but the ways that we craft it with the intergenerational mixing and the type of music sets, mm -hmm. if it's a party, even with the party, if, if I'm, it, let's say, if I'm doing a party for, and, and, and used to several, I haven't, I don't do it much now just simply because I, I'm, I, I'm, I don't particularly like it as much, but I used to do a lot of parties with the University of Cincinnati and then Miami University, which is close by here in Oxford, Ohio, which is about 30 minutes away. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And during Greek week, which when I was a very young man, I learned a lot of things about life during Greek week <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, and music and alcohol and, uh, and young men and women when they got together. But it was a fun time. Nothing bad, but it was a fun time. <laughs> Use your imagination. So I, That's right. And I'm not going to go any farther. And I'm, I'm under uh, restraining order to keep you uh, not able to tell you that. Uh, right. But the bottom line is, when I that demo, they want a lot of new music. Yeah, uh, and I still do on occasion here about one to two um, high schools here in the uh -huh. Cincinnati area. Sure, that sure. tend to be Catholic schools or Christian schools. Okay, simply because the demo is a little different. Yeah, uh, and my age, uh, you know, I'm 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 over fifty, and because of that, I clearly uh, act like it, and I'm a parent, mm -hmm. and I I that that colors everything I do. Sure. Uh, without being the music police, <clears throat> excuse me. But when I get to the point with my weddings, when we get to all of the music and they give me the demos and I try to get them as specific as I can, how many of your guests are going to be 50 years old, 40 years old and over mm -hmm. and how many will be 40 and under? And if it's, and, and I always, this is the other thing, especially at our first consult before they even hire me, mm -hmm. I ask them to bring, even if they're 25, 26, 27 for weddings, bring a parent with you. I ask them to, to bring it. And even if they don't say three words, I want them there. Because at the end of our conversation, they will begin to tell me their demo. And I want, because you always have more than one particular. People think it's the couple that's the client. Mm -hmm. It's the couple that's the guests of honor. But it's the family that's the client. Yeah, everybody who's there that, that, that you have to engage with to make it a great party. Well, in particular, that could be. But for me, the family is the main client. Okay. 
because the guests, they'll have fun, but they're not running the show. They're not, they may or may not be there at the 25th. Mm -hmm. The other reason I come to this conclusion of my philosophy is I have had, uh, I've been very lucky to be experienced in radio, in events, thousands of events. Yeah. Whether it's um, being the master of ceremonies at the Home Builders Association banquet, where they ask me uh, and another television personality to co MC. I've mm -hmm. done that several years. Or I've done, uh, <coughs> excuse me, been on television to do the master of ceremonies or the host for the Muscular Dystrophy uh, Association's Cincinnati affiliate. Sure. Uh, Labor Day. That's that's been fun. But when I get to these, I, I I'm I've done radio, and just my experience basically because when I started in the seventies, you could literally walk in, mm -hmm. <laughs> and if they needed an announcer, and you were sweeping the floor, uh, we need an announcer, kid, get over here. <laughs> hey, here we go. Right uh, now, you can't do that. Now you have to go to school, and some and most of the time, university. And, and or get an internship and start from there. Otherwise, the way that the radio biz is going in television, you don't get in. You don't just go to a broadcasting school even and do it. Sure. So walking in is not uh, an option anymore. Mm -hmm. I've done that for you know 38 years, 35 years. 32 at 103.5 FM in Cincinnati. Mm -hmm. But my training, Jason, I have two master's degrees in uh, family. And I knew when I started in my schooling in the 70s, I, that was just a passion of mine. Mm -hmm. And so I don't look at weddings. I have parties and the things I do, we talked about with the dances and the, and, the, and the Bengals parties and other things. And then we have weddings. And weddings are different because they're family. They're one sure. of three family events mm -hmm. that a family will do. And I'm trained when I, one of my master's degrees, I wanted to know why did we cut the cake? Mm -hmm. Why did we, why do we throw the bouquet? Sure. There are dozens of traditions. Sure. So I get with them. Like I just did one up in Northern Ohio, uh, because of the things that we do, we're asked to travel a lot, Chicago, Northern Ohio, down to Gatlinburg, sometimes mm -hmm. out to Vegas, whatever. And I, I tra traveled up to Northern Ohio, <coughs> excuse me, to an, uh, a Polish American family cool. who was marrying a Korean American family. And the mother's side of the family literally came and was a a uh, a representative from Plymouth Rock. Oh wow! So we did just a ton of things that had to do with this. Their parts of the daughters of the revolution, and uh, you know, and talked about the background. And then we had a lot of the Polish. American, some uh, one or two of them were two over two hundred year traditions in the family. Mm -hmm. That's a big deal. Yeah, that's not just a party. The younger guys under thirty, they want a party. Sure. The parents and the immediate family and some of the extended family over thirty. I always sit down and say to them, "We want to structure a wedding." to ba base it on two things, two types of people that go to a wedding. Mm -hmm. And this is true of most parties, and I will always ask them, who do you think it is? And, and uh, the answers I get, and I used to be one of them, I would say, oh, the two types of people, those that drink and those that don't. <laughs> well, right? sort of, but no. Uh, it really comes down to, at a wedding, it's the same thing as a holiday at your parents' house, whether no, regardless of your religious affiliation, or a holiday, or a family reunion. There are two types of people. Mm -hmm. Those that dance, and those that don't dance. Sure. And so, we do, for the dancing, they get to pick their music, and they go to DJ Intelligence, I'm on that, and they make their list, and we go over that, and I look at them, and I see it, and I go, okay, now, based on the demo that you told me and the list that you gave me, I have to see, is it realistic? Is it going to match? Because yeah. Is it going to produce the result correct. that I want? <clears throat> well, it's this way. In marriage education, if I were, if I were do, if, instead of me doing your master of ceremonies work and DJ work mm -hmm. at your wedding, yeah. if I were doing your premarital education, mm -hmm. after you get married, and then you get into that first year, I get with you because I usually do uh, a couple of sessions. I'm a, I'm a marriage educator and divorce mediator by training. 
So when I say I'm passionate about families and weddings, I mean it. Mm -hmm. I also tell them uh, it's not a two for one deal. If you get divorced, don't call me. But (laughs) I charge them more. But honestly, a year afterwards, I would send them out a survey. And that survey would ask them, are you satisfied, least or less satisfied, or more satisfied Mm -hmm. with the following things of your marriage in the first year? And those couples that are satisfied or more satisfied are usually those couples that are statistically have been able to see what things would be more like in the real life of being a couple. Mm. In other words, the more realistic they can be about how the coupledom is going to be, the more satisfied they are. That's the thing in prepping for the night of the wedding reception with the music. The more realistic they can be, and and I'm just going to tell you, my experience is most of the couples I've dealt with over the last Mm -hmm. 15, 20 years, they overestimate how many young people will be there and underestimate how many uh, of the older people will be there. Mm -hmm. And I always say to them, the same people that you see at a family reunion or at a holiday will be at your wedding sure. and or your funeral if they're still alive. This just happens to be wow. the happy. That's that's you know that's fascinating. That's definitely some something that uh, that we that we don't think about a lot when we go into it. And, and certainly coming from your background, which is uh, really valuable and, and interesting, and really a new way, a new approach uh, to look at it. Um, getting back to some of the specifics of of music. Um, <laughs> So when you, when you're, do you play, like some DJs play their music in sets, like sets of threes from different generations? Like, so you've got your, uh, you've got your kind of base of music. You know that you've got a group of people. You've got a third of your audience is, uh, is, is under, uh, under 30 and you've got uh, two thirds of your audience is over 45. So you're going to be drawing from music from those, for those generations that speak to those generations from your, your pre-planning console. So then when you're actually pre- presenting it, do you kind of go all over the place um, in terms of genre and not really worry about that and look more for like energy, appeal, uh, uh, interaction, or do you use uh, something else as far as like kind of putting together the presentation as you go? Or do you like play in sets? Great question. And uh, and this sort of goes back to what we were talking about a minute ago. Once I get the demo mm-hmm. and see how realistic they are, yep. then you get to the event and realize, well, they missed it. <laughs> <laughs> But I tend to believe them. I tend they, Now, I got to depend on them as my client, and I tell them that. I trust you, so if you say this is what's going to happen, we're going to go there. Right. Most of the time, they're pretty good about it. Mm-hmm. And so when I get there, I used to really do sets. I really, you know, I really depended on them and liked them. Okay, and when you say sets, like a three-song set from, like, say, the, the 70s, 80s, and then, six, then a three-song set yeah. from the 90s, so that sort of thing? But here's what I've learned. The biggest problem in the Midwest, anyway, in the Cincinnati and uh, Indiana and Kentucky, Ohio and and, uh, that area, uh, Pennsylvania and Mm -hmm. West Virginia, uh, that kind of uh, audience, most inexperienced DJs and masters of ceremonies Mm -hmm. make the mistake of starting the thump too soon. And by that, I mean throwing in the really hot dance songs and just getting the floor cooking. And I know it's funny, but it's th- this intergenerational mixing takes on more importance at a wedding and a family. I same thing if I do because we do a lot of family reunions, mm-hmm. where believe it or not, and that can be a very good source of income for jocks once they realize I'm I'm basically once you get into a family and they like you, you yeah. become much like an attorney. Yeah, you become the go-to guy. It's like, well, this you're is our DJ, DJ on retainer, right? I just did one a year ago, uh, Labor Day weekend, where I did the fourth sister. And I had done all of the four girls, her oldest or eldest sister, 22 years ago. Wow. And I was able to throw in the things that tied the family. They had some things they wanted to dance to that was the same. They had the same father-daughter dance for all four girls. Wow. So different ways to introduce them. And I uh, did some recordings and had some fun things with them. And at the very, the last one, we had all four girls come on and dance with their dad. Wow. How cool. Uh, Had the same person do the cake for all four weddings of the Mm -hmm. women. So what I'm saying to you is, is 
I used to like to have sets, mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. I usually will say if they'll let me, if, if, if they see that there's a need there. Because it's intergenerational, mm-hmm. I do like to start with the dancing, what would be considered oldies if we can. Okay. The first three, four songs. And what is oldies? Define what oldies looks like now. Well, in 2014. Yeah, it's uh, you can you can follow a classic radio description, okay, uh, or you can try and follow what the current popular version of whatever culture you're in right now. Okay. To uh, but to a 25 year old, an oldie could be a 1990s song. Right, or Joan Jett. When I say oldies, I'm talking about those. 60s and 50s songs that will appeal to an over 55 age group. Okay. I'm not talking about music as much as I am age group. Sure. Demo. And that can be a a wide variety. But generally speaking, because of our movies, our culture keeps those alive. Mm, Absolutely. Animal House and Dirty Dancing and even the newer stuff of of, of Shrek you know, I can't thank um, uh, Smash Mouth enough to bring and breathe new life into um, I'm, a, I'm believer. a believer. Yeah. And, and here's the thing, because of that, even though that's a rather old movie, animated mm-hmm. film, the, 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 the five-year-olds and six-year-olds of today are still watching Shrek. Right. And they, it's new to them. Yeah, exactly. It's still they, kept alive. You know, I like to move it, move it, or, or you know, happy from Despicable Me Too. Mm-hmm. So, but I'll start usually trying to get it so that they get it. It's like their, their Christmases, their family reunions, those intergenerational family times, and those guys. Otherwise, they're not going to dance. They're not going to have a chance to be on the floor. And I can't tell you how many times brides have said to me, "I've received thank you notes." From them going, I'm so glad that you warned us that you were going to do it, but that you did it. Uh, and I and because to a younger jock, he doesn't get. Let's here's an example. Now it doesn't help that I played some of it on the oldie station. We were considered mm-hmm, at mm-hmm. 103.5 uh, FM. We were considered one of the top two oldie stations from 1990 up to about 98. Mm-hmm, and because mm-hmm. of that, we got to do a lot of the oldies, the sure. 50s and sure. 60s. And I I knew what worked, but you know, uh, there are hot, slow songs. Mm-hmm. Here's the other thing I always tell them from a family perspective. Guys don't dance. They'll slow dance. Yep. You can drag them out in that first hour mm-hmm. until they get a few in them. They're going to slow dance and then sit back down. Right. And after they've got two or three or four, then you're sorry that they've danced, but they're <laughs> up and dancing, so we're okay. Right. But the, the older crowd over 50, 55, there are some that are really good dancers, ballroom dancers, thing, but generally speaking, they're, they're not going to, but they will slow dance. Mm-hmm. I tend to do more slow songs in the first couple hours, or excuse me, first hour, first couple of sets. And I, and I do limit the oldies, the 50s, the 60s, the 70s, uh, to two or three songs because they're tired. Sure. Right. Time <laughs> to change it up, recycle the dance floor. Correct. And that's the other thing. It's a great point you make. Intergenerationally, you may lose them. You see them walk off. And then you'll get them back. Mm-hmm. It can take you 30, 50, a half a minute. And I used to do this when I was in clubs. I, I did a club here uh, up to oh, probably um, from 95 to about 2007, something like that. That was strictly oldies. Mm-hmm. And uh, I, 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 I literally, um, I would mix my music to keep them going and slow them down. Mm. Keep them going, keep a mid-tempo, then slow them down. And the difference of why the clients wanted me to do it, even though there were other on-air personalities that were more popular, I averaged about $500 more at the bar for a non-wedding mm. event than the other jocks because of the tempo that I would keep, that I would slow them down, allow them to go and get a drink and not worry if they were dancing or not. Sure, let them rest. Those that weren't dancing love to slow dance, like to listen. Mm-hmm. They would come and dance. Weddings are very similar, similar to that in many instances, yeah. many aspects. The wow, older changing. guys, 
This has been this has been so fascinating. I feel like we could go on for hours and hours, and I think we could go on for hours and hours and hours. You know, just exploring this. You know, it's like you've made such a, an incredible between not only the education but applying what you've learned to how that applies to music, to how people react to it, to how you would actually program it and put it all together. And I really feel like like we really kind of got something really clear, like a really clear takeaway of of some different approaches and different things that people would try. And if it sounds like I'm wrapping up the show, it's because I am. <laughs> We've already come to the end and it's like and it's like like viewers have said it feels like we could go on more and so the best i could do would be to ask you to come back another time and we can dive into this topic and explore and swim around in here some more because i think there's a lot of really value really really a lot of value in really understanding and approaching the uh, the guests and the people that you're entertaining in this way jd well, thanks a lot, Jason. And, and just one thing I want to leave you with. Yes, please. Whether we're on the air or at an event, ne- A, every time you turn on the mic, mm-hmm. every time, don't waste the time of the people that are in your audience. That's number one. Number two, know your audience so that you don't waste their time. Mm-hmm. And number three, know your limits. Uh, if if I'm a very if I'm if I'm gonna be with a generally younger crowd. And I do have those weddings where they just are going to be 70 to 80, 90% young. Sure. Then I stick to that kind of music. And my general philosophy is shut up and play the music. (laughs) And they love me for it because I don't make any mistakes. And they think they've had a great time. Mm -hmm. I don't Mm -hmm. have to say my name five different times, six different times. I just, and they're on the floor and they come up and go, you're the best DJ in the world. I didn't say three words. Right. So whatever works for me, I hope this works for the guys and girls that are the professionals that are watching you. It's been a ball uh, because I'm really passionate about this uh, oh, to, to make sure that you include everybody. If you know your demo, include everybody mm-hmm. because at weddings, you're going to have your three, you know, your 15 year old cousin and your 80 year old grandma at parties. Maybe not at clubs. Definitely not. Yeah. Unless you're doing a club for a, you know, a retro club like I do. Sure. Yeah, know your audience. Absolutely. It comes down to like, know your audience. Who are you there to entertain and engage with? Thanks a ton, JD. Let's get together and do this again real soon. Thanks, man. For Mobile Music Thursday, this is Jason Jones and JD saying so long.